Hello there, welcome to Inquiry Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Today I'm going to revisit a previously resurrected Parker Vacuumatic. When I was restoring this Parker Vacuumatic that had a deep engraving in the barrel, I accidentally shattered a piece of the Vacuumatic pump. And in order to complete the restoration, I took a part from Frank here to add to Stein. That's good. Hey, nice shot. Way to slam dunk. To reverse procedure. Poor Frank here had a broken tine on the 14 karat gold nib and was now absent a vacuumatic pump. <laughs> so I ordered some new old fashioned parts from pentooling.com. They've arrived and I'm ready to put Frank here back together again and show you some interesting parts and supplies for vintage pen restoration right now. <laughs> So we're going to do three things here. I'm going to show you the parts that I ordered to restore the pen. Then I want to give you an overview of the pen tooling website and the products they offer. And I'll replace the sack on the pump that I ended up choosing, fill it and write with it. First, here are the parts that I ordered from pen tooling. I'll link the website in the description. I ordered three things, a new cup to replace the one that broke, an entire vacuumatic pump in solid brass, and one in aluminum like the original. Let's replace the ebonite cup on the original pump mechanism first, and then I'll have three pumps from which to choose for this pen. Here's the broken unit, and there's the sleeve collar that accepts the sack. We slide that through, making sure the spring is attached. There we go. And that all works. To permanently affix this cup to the end of that rod, I would use just a very, very small amount of cyanoacrylate glue, which you know as crazy glue, and push it on the end as far as it will go, like that. There. Now that's a functioning pump. I'm not going to glue it right now. I'll glue it when I'm ready to resack this pump. But that's ready to go now. I find it interesting that even pen tooling hasn't got a name for this piece. I call it a cup because that's what Steph from Grand Mia Pens calls it. Pen tooling calls it, quote, the piece that keeps breaking while you're trying to remove the little ball inside it left over from the last rubber diaphragm. That name is a bit long for me, even as an acronym. T P T K B W U Y T T R T L B I I L F T L R D. Yeah, it trips right off the tongue. Now to decide which one of these pieces to use. The original, the modern version of the original, or the one that's totally brass. They all function the same but have different aesthetics. Weight is a primary consideration as the brass unit weighs quite a bit more as expected. The brass unit weighs 5.5 grams, the original unit weighs 1.7 grams, and the modern version weighs 1.9 grams. So I've decided to just put the original pump back into the pen to keep it totally vintage. It isn't the same pump actually as the original to this pen, as the original is now in this pen. And it isn't a good idea to remove it once it's installed with a new sack, as there's considerable wear on the sack while trying to remove it from the pen. So let's install the sack on the original pump with the replacement uh, thingy. There's a red uh, thingy moving toward the green thingy. Red thingy moving toward the green thingy. I think, I think we're the green thingy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to permanently affix the thingy on the end of the thingy rod. Uh, but there's an acronym that I used to teach my students in theater school, and that goes PTGDSOF, which means put the goddamn sleeve on first. So you have to make sure you put the sleeve on first, there, like that, because once you glue it, you're screwed if you haven't put the goddamn sleeve on first. And I'm just going to a little dabble do you cyanoacrylate glue 
on the end just like that just the end of that celluloid rod then we take the thing and we hooge it and we push it as far as it will go there and that part's done next I've cut a sack to roughly 28 and a half millimeters then we're going to use our pellet inserter tool put that inside the sack and we're going to press that into the new thingy mahujits and it's in Ooh, that went in really nicely let's see if i can get it back out again there we go and then i use this pellet insertion tool from the pendragons because the diameter is exactly that of the sack and we're going to add a little bit of talc to the sack so it'll roll back on itself and the sack came back the very next day they thought he was a goner but the sack came back he just couldn't stay away folks so there we go light coating and this is the part that sometimes I fast forward through and sometimes I just cut away from because I never know how long it's going to take to roll this back on itself and up to that little spot right there so let's see how we're how we do this time I seem to have good luck with this one let's see if I can get that off of there yep there we go and it's working perfectly so you don't need to glue this on here the uh, friction from inside the barrel squeezes on that part right there but I do put some silicone grease right there actually it's a little silicone oil to help it engage with the barrel when you're turning it you want to make sure that it isn't twisting inside there and I also put a little bit of silicone grease silicone oil in this case just on the edge of that sack right there just a little bit just to help that spin inside the rest of it's going to go on those threads and this is silicone oil that's you can get at your hardware store it's for uh, lubricating treadmills actually and that's the oil not the grease and we're going to insert that sack inside the barrel sort of twist it back and forth a little bit to get it moving there we go and we engage the threads and that's where I use the Parker vac extraction tool from the inky nib which has a collet inside it that I thread onto the back of the pump and we twist it all the way into the barrel Put the handle on tighten it down and then we can give the barrel a twist just hand tight doesn't need to be really really herculean strong tight release the collet give it a little shot it shoots the pin out the other side and we can unscrew the collet now we test to make sure it's working you can't see it of course i can and now we screw the section back down and i'll put a little bit of silicone oil on those threads as well just to make sure that there's no leakage wipe off the excess give the nib a little bit of a polish using my jeweler's cloth and there we go so now we're ready for ink and now that the pen is completely restored let me tell you about this nib I told you that a tine had broken off after I had restored this pen the first time hence me using it for parts I had intended to grind it down into a stub or something just to make the nib right better living with a stub than a dead broken nib I had been admonished previously for clipping the ends off of two previous gold nibs and making them right something about them lacking tipping material so I took this one to my nibmeister Jack Hernandez and asked him about grinding it down because the tine was broken while explaining to me that many vintage gold nibs had no tipping material to begin with and so grinding it to make it work just makes sense he ran it over his rotary tool stone for about 30 seconds and now it writes beautifully let's focus on on that tip and see what he did so no tipping material and it's like a tiny little stub 
with a slight oblique angle to it. I'll show it to you in the writing sample. But it only took him 30 seconds. I swear on the memory of George Parker. Amazing. Now with a new pump and sack, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous fountain pen. Pen tooling is now my go-to destination for vintage fountain pen parts. They have parts for vintage Parker, Schaefer, Waterman, and Montblanc. Plus they have miscellaneous parts including Aurora, Esterbrook, Eversharp, Platinum, and generic items like ebonite feeds, fill tubes, end jewels, and clips, and even more. Specifically for Parker, pen tuning has everything you can want for Parker Vacumatics, Parker 51s, and even parts for Parker 75, Parker mechanical pencils, and ballpoints. It really is quite a treasure trove. If there's something you don't see, just send them an email and ask. Now let's ink this puppy up with Waterman Serenity and write. But before I fill it with ink, Let's take a moment just to admire this translucent barrel. I'm going to shine some light through it so you can see. And this is a black unit, not a silver or a gold unit. But look at that transparency. It's just gorgeous. This stacked celluloid striping is very, very subtle on this black pen, as you can see. I marvel at the workmanship of these 1930s and 40s Parker Vacumatics. Here the bubbles. Bubbles are good. I just pump until I hear no more bubbles. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. And here we have a 19... Let's see. I've forgotten. 1946. Parker. Acumatic. And it has a 14 karat gold. Uh, I'd say it's about a 0.8 millimeter stub. Not too bad. This is very smooth. And is slightly thicker in the vertical than it is in the horizontal and it's nicely wet. So back to life again. So what are my thoughts about this resurrection? This experience has proven to me there are no accidents, only learning opportunities. I was pissed off that I broke the thing me hujits on the vacuumatic pump, but I discovered pen tooling in the process of looking for a replacement. After restoring this pen for the first time, discovering a broken tine on that nib, when I reached to write with it was a heart sinking moment. But watching Jack take it and make it write beautifully again in just 30 seconds filled me with awe and admiration. I now have substantially more vintage pens waiting their turn to live again. Please, I want to live again. Then I have new pens to review. So my Sunday video slots are full for weeks, but the Saturdays, not so much. I've got a feeling these dead pens will start filling the channel like The Walking Dead. But next Sunday I have a treat. It can't be called a resurrection because this pen wasn't dead when I bought it. This is the 1960s Schaefer Imperial Touchdown I bought in Port Hope, Ontario just a couple of weeks ago at a beautiful antique shop. I'm sure I overpaid for it, but I've wanted one of these beautiful pens for years. And to me, this Schaefer Imperial nib, which you can also find on the Schaefer Targa, is the most beautiful fountain pen nib ever created. So let me know where I'm wrong, folks. Just look at this. Aren't they gorgeous? I'll be cleaning and polishing and fine-tuning this pen over the next week. I've already written with it by adding some water to the dried up ink that was inside it, and it is stunning. So until next time, keep your stick on the ice. Uh, until next time around, <coughs> keep your stick on the ice. And thanks for watching. I made this.